tell you when it's ready. Um, also, I will make you a co-host in case something happens to my internet. Okay. All right. So that's done. Let me hit go live. And we are live. Uh, good evening, folks. This is Bob Cohen. I am going to wait a couple minutes and we will get started. So if you would just uh, bear with us, but welcome. Happy to see you all here tonight. All right, uh, we're gonna get started. Um, I know that people generally join during the course of the beginning of this, so uh, welcome everybody. My name is Bob Cohen, I'm a SCORE mentor. Uh, again, very pleased to have you here tonight. Um, this is the second of two workshops that we are doing regarding networking. Uh, tonight, I am joined by Dave Lupian. Dave is actually gonna be doing the program tonight. Uh, Dave has been with SCORE for several years. Uh, Dave is one of our key uh, mentors. Uh, he specializes in um, new product development, marketing, um, several other things. I'll let Dave tell you a little bit about himself. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and introduce Dave and uh, let's get started. Dave, take it over and uh, I will be following chat. So feel free to chat. Um, and uh, uh, I would like to um, let you know that I have gotten some chat that is inappropriate. And if that happens, the person that does that will be removed from this workshop. So um, just letting you know in advance, if that happens, um, that's what's going to um, go on. But Dave, take it from here. All right, thanks, Bob. Well, good evening, everyone. <clears throat> uh, well, I'm competing with the Browns, so uh, <laughs> I'll try to make uh, this presentation short and sweet and uh, above all impactful, I hope. Um, so let's talk a little bit about SCORE and who we are. And um, uh, some of you may know us. Uh, we are the largest network of free volunteers in, uh, in, in Northeast Ohio. There are 92, 93 of us, and uh, we are here at your beck and call. Uh, you just go to the website that I'll show you uh, our landing page, and you can uh, sign up and find a mentor. Um, our services are free, and that's one of the most uh, key issues that we try to get across to everyone. You know, you're not paying for anybody to come in and um, and do consulting fees with you. We are absolutely free. 
Um, we are a division of the Small Business Administration, the SBA, and the SBA wants small businesses to survive and thrive uh, because that becomes a tax base that it provides countless dollars into our economy <clears throat> every year. So um, feel free to call on us at any time. Our mission, vision, and values, we serve the small business community. You know, we're not necessarily focused on Fortune 500s, Fortune 100s. We're looking at the small business guy. You know, we're the, uh, the plumber, the, the, the restaurateur, those folks out there that um, are really the guts, the nuts and bolts of our economy. Uh, and as we say there in the last paragraph, small business drives our national economy. 80% of our GNP is from small businesses. So, um, you know, we're here to serve them. Um, we have the highest DE&I um, rating of just about any organization out there. Um, you know, we are focused on those underserved, those, uh, those that have been disenfranchised, whether they've been Hispanic women, uh, veterans, or African Americans. Um, you know, you have no uh, issues with us in terms of uh, giving you all the attention necessary to have your business grow and uh, uh, succeed. Um, we're very proud of the fact that uh, we were the 2022 chapter of the year. Uh, we started over 500 new businesses, and uh, uh, we are recognized by SCORE National as one of the, uh, 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 the most successful and uh, the most impactful uh, chapter in, in, in America. And, and for that, we were uh, honored with having been uh, named Chapter of the Year in 2022. Uh, this is our landing page, uh, just wrapping up this little segment here. Please go to find a mentor, and uh, you can uh, 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 have a mentor uh, contact you within 24 hours of signing up. Uh, we serve the counties that you see there. Uh, we go from west to east, uh, from uh, Erie all the way out the west to uh, Ashtabula, uh, far east. So um, we encompass that northeast Ohio area. And again, uh, we have 92 volunteers within that geographic area. <clears throat> okay, so the, the reason why we're giving these two webinars, <clears throat> excuse me, um, last week and this week, is that uh, SCORE is having a, an event on September 12th that is purely networking. That is, that is um, an event where there will be 40 booths uh, populated by uh, 40 entrepreneurs, 40 SCORE clients that will interact and connect with other SCORE clients, and more importantly, some SCORE mentors that they may not have uh, known to be helpful to their project, but um, they will be there uh, and we'll have a cash bar, some hors d'oeuvres, and a fun evening. So uh, key to that evening is the networking. So what I want to do here tonight is talk about some of the best techniques for developing a message that gets you attention and uh, become an effective networker. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I still have an allergy, so uh, occasionally I'll be clearing my throat. Uh, so be patient, please. Um, all right, so um, who can benefit from um, uh, my little talk here tonight? Well, certainly startups and those considering starting a company. Uh, you know, you walk into a room and, you know, you have a ton of information you want to convey. Um, well, I'd like to talk about, uh, you know, focusing that information to a few key phrases that will make you compelling and impactful. And then there's the other side of where you walk into a room and you just want to make connections. You know, might be looking for your next job might be looking for, um, you know, a, you know, a company to sell to. Um, well, those are the folks that um, I hope benefit here tonight. <clears throat> All right. So before I go any further, I want to address the elephant in the room. And that is the issue of introverts and extroverts. You know, not all of us are, um, you know, uh, you know, are comfortable with getting out there and shaking hands and, you know, becoming, um, you know, the uh, life of the party. 
Um, you know, I know I know a little bit about this topic because my son is an introvert. Um, not only that, he's in human resources. And so a human resource a guy that is an introvert is uh, like kind of like an engineer who doesn't like math, right? But uh, so we talk about this uh, a lot at the dinner table and um, and uh, elsewhere where, uh, you know, I can help my son uh, with some of the issues that, uh, you know, an introvert may face in, uh, you know, in day-to-day -day interaction. <clears throat> um, you know, as I say there, and the literature often supports this, is that introverts are the most effective networkers. They rely on the, on the quality of the interaction, not on gathering a bunch of people and, you know, and, and having a few jokes. They want to focus in on, on those that can impact them immediately. Uh, they're great listeners. And if you're in a networking situation, listening is more important than talking. Because when you listen, you are automatically conveying to the other person that you're interested in them and you want to continue a relationship. Um, so in along with that, I'll, I'll give you three tips <clears throat> that I've run across um, that might be helpful if you're an introvert and you find yourself in a networking environment. <clears throat> First thing you want to do is control the moment. Um, you know, you know, you you know, you put on the spot. You know, you have to say who you are, etc. Or you 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 might be finding yourself in a group of people. One of the best ways is to is to to integrate into that group is to ask a question, ask for advice, or even give a compliment. Those three techniques right there are guaranteed to have you control that moment and allow you to you know talk freely about yourself. And, and and to build, to begin to build a relationship with the other person. <clears throat> uh, second technique is, you know, you have to be comfortable with your surroundings. Um, you know, in, in, in some regard, you might want to visit the facility first or even show up early. You know, I say, you know, they walk the field. Uh, that's a term used in, you know, in pro sports. You know, how many times have you been to the Guardians game or to the um, um, a Browns game and you've, you know, you show up uh, two hours early, uh, you know, you want to get good seats and you see the players out there, you know, you know, if a visiting team walks into progressive field, they're looking at the at the foul lines, they're throwing balls off the left field wall to find out what the carom is, to find out how it bounces, um, you know, uh, visiting teams, you uh, in the football stadium, we'll, we'll look at every blade of grass, look at the turf. You know, they want to be comfortable with those surroundings because they have to perform at their very best. So being comfortable in that environment, that physical environment, that physical space, allows you to perform uh, better than just walking in cold. <clears throat> and lastly, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, if you can use a memorized line or a script as an intro, um, you know, basically, you know, that sets you up, you know, that provides a nice platform where you don't have to think You're just walking in and, and, and saying that memorized line and begin the conversation around that. And that essentially is an elevator pitch. You know, it doesn't matter if you're looking for your next job and you want to talk to the hiring um, manager or you want to find a customer, uh, a new customer, or you're talking to a banker or an investor, uh, a memorized line to begin your uh, presentation is always uh, a good way to break the ice. So well, let's talk about, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the guts of the presentation and, and exactly, um, you know, what you need to do to become memorable, uh, become memorable to the other person, become memorable to, uh, you know, the buyer, the investor, uh, and whoever may be in the audience. So <clears throat> with that in mind, you have to know your audience. Uh, that audience is comprised, can be comprised of customers, buyers, bankers, investors, or you could find yourself at a trade show. Um, you know, for example, you can tweak your presentation or your 11 second elevator speech 
The buyer at uh, sitting across a table from you um, is a lot different than um, um, somebody sitting or standing in front of you at a trade show. You know, trade shows are very loud, noisy, uh, very dynamic environments. Uh, so you have to be very concise, quick, and compelling there versus a uh, quiet uh, conference room. You know, those are two pictures there that I pulled out, you know, you know, very casual environment uh, versus a, a more formal environment where there's a presentation uh, and people are expecting, uh, you know, you to arrive at, you know, a conclusion and, uh, and move on from there. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you have a company and um, you want to create a, the perfect pitch, you know, some you probably already have found uh, a solution to a problem and believe you have a competitive advantage in the marketplace. <laughs> All right, so I'm talking about folks here who aren't looking for uh, a, a connection randomly. Um, somebody who owns a company or, or a startup or believe they have a uh, uh, the better mousetrap, a, 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 new, a new product, for example. Um, they have to develop their pitch and 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 create that pitch in a concise way around the solution to a problem. Also, uh, you probably at this point have discovered your attention getter. You know, that attention getter could be anything from, um, you know, a demonstration of your product to um, a story that we'll talk about. So um, those are the foundations for those of you out there who have companies who have products and, uh, you know, and want to begin, you know, that entrepreneurial journey. <clears throat> I have to throw this slide in, um, if I can digress a little bit. Um, this is not an elevator pitch. Um, we, uh, as SCORE, uh, often participate in, in uh, pitch contests, and we see a lot of folks out there, and they, uh, you know, uh, they try to impress us with what they believe is an elevator pitch. And this is actually something that we found. This is the, these are the exact words from somebody who uh, pitched a product to us in the Key for Women pitch contest uh, uh, a few years ago. Uh, you know, I would love to start a company helping people. Now, I have had this idea for two years, you know, on and on rambling. You know, this is not um, how you impress folks. And please, you know, Stay away from you know the, you know the you know the, um, uh, the 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 passion you may have for your company is not what they want to hear. What they want to hear is what you do and how you can help them uh, with the product or the service and the and the the improvement of the product or the service. <laughs> so let's talk about two approaches that you can use. You know, and and I, I kind of have introverts there in parentheses because you know this is kind of a a, um, a thing that an introvert may want to do. You know, state exactly what you do and the benefit that you provide. And this is the memorized script that I talked about earlier. That technique is crisp, concise, and compelling. It doesn't require a lot of thought. It's a pre a, a, a pre arranged script, and um, and it is very effective. Because you know you create that. Oh, I see. Oh, that's interesting. You know that's what you're looking for. Somebody to pull back and say, you know, that's pretty interesting. Um, tell me more about it. The other technique is a short story that's conversational and builds a relationship with the other person. You know, extroverts tend to rely more uh, on this technique. <laughs> you know, as a side story. Uh, uh, I was at a pitch contest or a uh, pitch final a few weeks ago at Cleveland State, and uh, you know a fellow there had developed an app that um, uh, focused on mental health, and uh, he his his story surrounded the issue of him being suicidal, and he was on the verge of taking his own life. And he realized that, uh, well, he, he was interrupted in that process. And uh, it, av after two weeks in the hospital, uh, he realized that he, he can find an app or, or develop an app 
for folks who are in his situation that uh, could immediately access mental health professionals or folks in the situation that he's in and begin a discussion. Uh, and uh, this was a very impactful story. Uh, you, know, he, you know, he took three minutes to tell the story very concisely where he was on the verge of suicide. And, and this uh, uh, allowed him to uh, think about helping others. And uh, that impactful story really, uh, you know, carried the day for him, you know, and really allowed him to be a final in that pitch contest, a finalist. So crisp, compelling, and concise. <laughs> I like this model because it is very simple. It just simply states, I help X achieve Y by doing Z. You know, there, you know, I, I, I help somebody achieve a, a higher level or, or, or uh, more, may make them more efficient by doing this. Some examples, and these are examples from my actual clients that I've been working with over the last few years. I help golfers achieve lower handicaps by providing a revolutionary new training aid. Wow, you know, you can help me get a lower handicap. Now, for those of you who don't golf out there, um, yeah, um, you know, uh, the lower the handicap, uh, the better. Um, if you are a one, it's better than a 15. Um, so uh, that's where you want to uh, get to. Uh, you know, the pros on the PGA Tour, there are probably about zero, one, two, or three. You know, guys like me who are just playing occasionally, probably in the 15 to 20 <laughs> range. So I was working with a fellow uh, who, de who developed a, a, a revolutionary new training aid involving putting. And uh, we worked on his um, um, va value proposition and uh, elevator speech. And he's very successful right now. So here's another one. <coughs> Excuse me. I help chefs create the most innovative recipes by sourcing and providing unique African spices from the continent. Oh, I see exactly what you're doing. You're bringing spices from Africa that are kind of unique and exotic, and you're using them to create some, you know, innovative new recipes. Well, that's pretty cool. Another one, um, Jenna, if you're out there in the audience, this is from you. Uh, you've helped me uh, understand the issue of monarch butterflies and uh, their impact in our environment. And she says, I help monarch butterflies survive and proliferate by creating and selling a selection of herbal teas. Well, when you hear that, you're saying, what? You know, you're, you know, how incongruous is that? Monarch butterflies and herbal teas together in the same sentence? Tell me more, Jenna. And Jenna actually has uh, participated in a, uh, um, a pitch contest in Las Vegas and, um, you know, and made tremendous contacts there and her business is uh, off and running. So there are three examples, <coughs> excuse me, uh, that I've run across from my own um, um, mentoring at, at SCORE. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, a couple couple interesting comments um, that you can comment on. So um, Kelly is saying that a lot of people don't understand um, the WIIFM, uh, what's in it for me. That's uh, something that she uses and possibly people should think about that in terms of when they're talking to people, what's in it for them. That's, that, that's a great point. Um, that's called, you know, you, know, uh, you know, in new product development, we're always thinking of the new, uh, of the customer. And, uh, you know, what's in it for me? How do I benefit? You know, and that's a good point, Kelly. Here's here's one more, Dave. Um, this person has a background in um, radio announcing and, and doing copywriting. Um, you know, to understand how many words are used in a good pitch, you know, um, somewhere between um, 75 words in a 30 second uh, uh, commercial uh, seems to work or, or somewhere around 140 words will work in a three minute pitch. So, you know, you really don't have that much in terms of time and, and, and wording uh, in order to get that message out. Yeah, yeah you know, I found that 
Um, you know, it, it can be very individual to a product or service. You know, there are some services out there where it really takes about, you know, a good two minutes to really describe what you're doing. But in with those two minutes, um, you know, 75 words or 100 words can really can convey, uh, you know, the uh, the heart of the matter. And, um, you know, that becomes your 11 second elevator speech. But good point. <clears throat> All right. So when I work with Jumpstart, um, this is a technique that they convey to their clients. Um, you know, beginning to um, or beginning your 11 second elevator speech with just a data dump. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so sit in front of your computer in a Word document and just write as much as you can on answer these three questions. What do I do? Who do I do it for? And why it matters? And just ramble on and on and on and put as much information down there as you possibly can. Because what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut it to one paragraph. You know, you're gonna throw words out there that are redundant. You're gonna throw concepts out there that are very obvious. You're gonna throw jargon, technical jargon, and you throw that away. Um, you know, you're going to throw all the extraneous uh, things that really have no impact on your uh, ultimate goal. And as Kelly says, what's in it for me? Uh, you know, you're talking about the customer and working backwards and how you can improve <clears throat> his or her life. So one paragraph, cut it to three sentences. You'd be surprised how easy that is. And then cut it to one sentence. And, you know, uh, you know, you're going to be taking some things out there that you don't want to take out, but you're going to have to be thinking of, you know, back to our original, I help X or I or, or your, that, that the, the XYZ sentence, um, you know, I help this person by providing this to allow them to do this. You know, that's what's in it for me. Um, so that's a technique that's been used and can be successful. <clears throat> All right, let's talk about the second approach, which is telling a story. You know, I, I mentioned earlier about um, John from, from, from Cleveland State, um, who, uh, who was involved in a, uh, a, a mental health startup, and he started this app surrounding his own personal story. And if you can create a personal story or lend an insight that may not be obvious, um, you know, that's always going to grab attention. So, so I'm going to give you some, um, what I think are some key points in storytelling that I found. <clears throat> you know, you know, you don't have to go ramble on and on about, you know, in your story. They can be short. They can be concise. They can be compelling. You know, it, an example of that, quite honestly, is a TED Talk. You know, for those of you who don't know what a TED Talk is, that's um, technology, entertainment, and design, um, you know, those are the topics that folks uh, will talk about that uh, had an impact on their life, or or in 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 some way was pivotal in their development and growth. Um, and they can, and if you Google, or I'm sorry, if you YouTube any of these TED talks, um, they are amazing. Uh, you know, I, uh, I I have found some really amazing stories there within the 20 minutes that they allow for the uh, talk. So that is a great example. Um, and uh, you can use those as uh, helpful starters. Um, your first sentence can be a wow statement <laughs> or start with a question. Um, you know, if you, you know, if you, uh, you know, I'll give you some examples uh, on, on a wow statement or some questions that you could use, but you know, that's always impactful in getting somebody's attention. And again, that's fairly obvious, <laughs> you're, you know, if you're saying a wild statement, right? So storytelling builds an emotional and interpersonal bridge to your audience. You know, as Bob talked about last week, people want to buy from people that they like. And the, uh, the importance of building that interpersonal bridge and that emotional connection is, is very important. And a story is, uh, you know, can be key to doing that. Um, uh, a thought leader. So, 
<clears throat> I use the expression thought leader here and not expert. But a story, if you're a storyteller, you can, uh, you know, you can, you're, you can position yourself as a thought leader in your industry. You know, what is a thought leader? You know, uh, you know, if you were to talk about chefs in, in, in the Cleveland area or um, restaurateurs, you know, Brad Friedlander is a chef. Uh, he's an expert in, um, in um, you know, in fine dining and you, you may have eaten in some of his restaurants um, in, a, in Beachwood. He has one, for example. However, Brandon Christ, uh, Krastowski, um, um, the owner of Edwin's, is a thought leader. You know, he's the one that's creating new programs and is out front and in, in, in the uh, development of new restaurant concepts. So that's the difference. A good storyteller, you know, the ability to tell a story is um, is tremendous in getting you out front and having recognized as a thought leader. So how do you do this? How do you build a story? Well, first of all, um, there are really three elements to this. Number one, um, you know, you want to find that key insight or a unique approach. You know, you can start with the facts and figures. Uh, you start with a question, as we talked about, or that wow statement. You know, around that key insight or any of those, you want to create suspense, tension, and drama. You know, um, you know, going back to our friend at, at, at Cleveland State who had the mental health um, app, you know, he immediately created suspense and drama over the fact that he was about to take his own life. But but pulled back and realized that um, you know there was more to life than just uh, blowing your brains out with a uh, uh, Smith and Wesson. Uh, so creating suspense and drama will lead to a resolution, and uh, you know that the higher the impact that resolution has, uh, you know the more people will pull back and, and pay attention. This technique is used, you know, I, you know, this technique is used in literature 101. You know, songwriters use it. Movie uh, um, um, producers use it. You know, it's the ability to uh, create tension and drama and resolve it with high impact. So let's go back to a wow statement. You know, I find these to be kind of um, a good way to begin that process. You know, um, let's go back to um, the, the, the three individuals that I had mentored over the last uh, few years. Uh, let's talk about the golf pro first. You know, if he was in a clubhouse uh, at Canterbury or Stonewater or any of the golf courses in Cleveland, and he was talking to a bunch of golfers, he would say, I can show you secrets of a touring golf pro and lower your handicap by 10 points. That is a wow statement. If you can lower my handicap by 10 points, I'm listening to you. You know, that to me is, you know, so I'll pay for that. You know, whatever your revolutionary new um, technique is, I'll pay for it. Um, let's talk about the chef. My spice products create five-star Michelin rated recipes. Now, for those of you who may know, uh, you know, Michelin is the way Restaurants rate uh, their services, or a restaurant is rated by the Michelin Guide as to uh, one star through five star. And if a recipe or a or a dish has a five star rating, you know it's you know it's the top of the line. She is saying basically, I can help you do that. My spice products will help you. Agena, the monarch butterfly is becoming extinct, and I am saving them. You know, that's pretty impactful, you know, uh, you know, uh, extinction of a species and you're saving them. Tell me more. <laughs> so those are examples of wild wow statements. Some questions you can use, you know, how do you keep up with new technology? Pretty obvious. You know, if you're in that technology app, a building software design business um, category, um, here he goes. Let's talk about the the golfer. Would you be interested in shaving ten strokes off your golf game? Um, how do you find temporary workers? You know, there was a uh, an agency that we uh, mentored 
um, that was um, involved in finding workers for um, uh, the service industry. You know, it's hard to find them right now. But um, this fellow had had designed a um, an app based uh, or a, an app based technology on your phone that you can dial in immediately and uh, and um, tap into a uh, a library or a category or a um, what's the word I'm looking for <clears throat> a uh, reservoir of temporary workers ready to come out and help you. Lastly, do you have problems or do you have a problem? Uh, should be no S there. Do you have a problem with anything? And uh, I can help you solve that problem. All right, so let's wrap up here and talk about how I measure success or impact from what I'm talking about. <clears throat> do you get questions? Basically, you know, that's, that's uh, fairly fundamental. You know, you know pretty, early in your discussion, if there's interest. That's what you wanna do. You wanna get questions from people because that shows folks are interested in what you're saying. Uh, create a reason to reconnect, uh, anything, a lunch. You know, when you pull away from that interaction, you wanna carry that interaction on. You don't wanna put a period at the end of that sentence. You wanna move on and have a lunch, have a coffee. Um, have uh, do anything to uh, promote further interaction. Even send an email the next day. Connect on LinkedIn. <coughs> LinkedIn is essential um, in business relationships. And the you know the reason for LinkedIn is that people change jobs quite frequently. You know the business card that you had from a person six months ago with their contact information may not be uh, valid anymore. LinkedIn allows you to, to continually maintain contact with that person years into the future. Okay, so I'm gonna give you some best tips before we wrap up here that I found uh, to be uh, pretty invaluable. Um, first of all, <clears throat> it's very difficult for a technician or a technical person to get into the mode of a salesman. But you have to be comfortable with the fact that if you start a company, if you own a company, you have to be the uh, chief salesman. You know, you have to be an effective person to be out there and uh, communicate. It may not be easy for everybody, but you know that's what you know. Fortunately, uh, you know that's the uh, career you've chosen at this point. Uh, do not dwell upon technology specifics or say things that require background knowledge. You know, I, I was involved in a pitch contest a few weeks ago where, um, you know, a fellow used the word additive technology. Um, I don't, you know, a lot of folks just don't know what additive technology is, but it, it is another word or it's another phrase to describe 3D printing. But a lot of folks know what 3D printing is. <clears throat> additive technology or additive manufacturing uh, is really, you know, overhead, you know, over some people's heads and was not really understood. Um, continually measure the audience's level of understanding. Uh, you want to eliminate confusion uh, at all points. Uh, lastly, you know, this is a pretty obvious one. Start small. You know, practice with friends and family, you know, and if you're an introvert, you know, that's where you want to start, you know, begin your process with, um, you know, the memorized script and uh, friends and family. So uh, in wrapping up, <clears throat> this is our um, landing page. Um, you know, as I say, um, find a volunteer that will come out and uh, and work with you and really help you, um, you know, with any of these, you know, topics that I've discussed or concepts, you know, we can help you uh, develop that 11 second elevator speech and uh, and put your best foot forward. So with that, you know, um, talk about some questions if you, if you have any, and um, we can wrap up. So Dave, um, Boris actually sent a really interesting question and let me just read it. It would be helpful to learn 
and, and I'll, I'll, I'll work through it a little bit, how to design AI, AI prompts uh, using your approach. So um, <laughs> Boris, you just missed an incredibly fabulous AI presentation by SCORE two days, three days ago, I think it was Tuesday. Um, and it will be, um, if it's not already, it should be in our, either on our YouTube page or directly in our, um, in our website. But uh, just a couple things. I mean, you, you need to be, you need to start, and I, I would recommend um, GPT or chat GPT for something like what you're talking about. You can get a lot of stuff uh, pushed toward you through that. You need to start out fairly general and you might actually ask, how do you do an 11 or give me an 11 seconds um, uh, elevator pitch um, based on, and you would put in your, your, you know, the things that your company is doing, some of the things that you're offering and you will get something back. Now, whether or not it's going to end up making sense um, is something that you'll have to judge on your own. Certainly, I don't know what your business is at this moment in time or anybody else in the room. But what you then do is you go back and you start honing in um, more and more specific. Um, I've done this with marketing plans. I've done this with um, business plans. I've done this with financial information. And uh, it works very, very well. Um, I don't want to get into too many specifics um, at this moment in time. I would recommend that if you are available to take a listen to that workshop that was just done, it is very, very well done and you'll get a lot out of it. Um, Dave, did you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I have used uh, chat GPT to develop um, marketing plans and value propositions. And it is quite amazing. I have to admit, it is quite amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I put together an entire marketing plan that would have taken me three or four hours to write. And, and you know, within about 15 or 20 minutes, I had everything I needed. So it's, it's pretty incredible if you get a chance, if nothing else, just go online and, and mess around with it and see what you can do. Uh, thanks for bringing that up, Boris. Thank you. Uh, for the moment, chat GPT is free. Uh, um, uh, Zenobian um, wrote in um, some of the other um, AI stuff is beginning to start charging some service charges. And, you know, somewhere along the line, chat GPT is probably going to want to monetize as well. Uh, so for now, it is free. Uh, I'm just looking at some of the questions that are coming in. Um, so Andrea is paying $400 a year. I don't know if that's on chat GPT or if that's something else, Andrea. Um, but yeah, you know, the, there, there are um, uh, other AI um, mechanisms out there that are charging. Um, hopefully they're worth their, worth their charges. Um, I uh, did not see Portage County on the list. Uh, Andrea, I'm not sure I understand that. Um, are, you, are you talking about on the list of where SCORE Cleveland is located? Um, if that's the case, um, yeah, we're in seven counties along the lake. Portage, I think, is um, either the Akron or the Canton chapter. Uh, if you go online and you're looking for a, um, a um, mentor, uh, generally the, um, the fulfillment happens based on your, on your geographic location by zip. Uh, let's see what else we have here. So thank you, um, Kim. Um, Kimberly says, I have a SCORE mentor and she is amazing. Uh, and thanks for the information. You are so welcome. Um, yes, the areas you service. Okay, yeah. So the areas we service are seven counties um, along Lake Erie from Ashtabula on the east. If you go all the way west into Huron um, County, uh, Erie County, or there's basically seven counties along there um, that, that we service. Um, the, the other 
score chapters serves other uh, counties. So you may fall into that. But if you go onto our website and you see a mentor that you like based on looking at their um, uh, their profiles, then you can actually request that mentor directly and that mentor will be assigned to you. Um, check the features of Futurepedia uh, for a list of AI tools. Uh, that's probably, that's a good tip. Thanks, Boris. Um, I, I have not looked any further yet in uh, chat GPT because so far it's really helped me uh, with my clients. So, I mean, I actually will submit stuff that comes out of there and sit down and talk it through with my clients. Um, any Anything else? Let's see, I think we've still got some more. So, Andrea, if you want to, you can just go to the SCORE website, request a mentor, um, and if you look at the profiles of the mentor, find somebody that fits what you're trying to accomplish, uh, put their name in there, and you will be assigned that person. Um, so far, I think that's it. I don't see any other questions. Um, anybody else have anything? Um, I just got something new in the Q&A. Let me pull that up. Okay, I'm, I'm going to read this. I just want to look it over real quick. Uh, this, is, this is one directly for you, Dave. So this is from Jonathan. Uh, when mingling at a networking event, um, it can be challenging to elbow into the conversation. I've tried using compliments and asking questions. I've often ended up listening to conversations or cutting bait without being part of the conversation. I have too as well. You know, um, um, what are some good strategies for, for making conversations um, more productive? Yeah, well, here's one I always use. Um, <clears throat> you know, if we're standing there, and person, the person next to me is talking, I'll say, yeah, I agree with that. I think I th that's a good point. I agree with that. And then begin a talk or, or then begin a sentence into a, you know, an area that you'd like to talk about. But by agreeing with him or saying that's a good point, you're affirming the, and validating what he just said. And then he can relax and listen to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, another possibility is if you know somebody you want to meet within a specific um, networking event, but you know people there that potentially could know that person, getting a, a warm introduction might help as well. Yeah. So let's see if I have anything else. That's it in the Q&A. Um, and let's see. Um, so far, that appears to be it as well in the chat. Um, somebody said, thanks for all you do. And um, we, we are so grateful and humbled by the people that we work with and for. Um, you have no idea how fulfilling it is to work with people um, through SCORE as a mentor. And I know that there are a lot of business people on this call that may actually have something to offer. If you are at all interested in becoming a SCORE mentor, um, also go to our website and look at the section under volunteer and, and check that out. Um, um, you know, if you've got some good experience and you want to give back, we're very, very happy to have you. And also, uh, we hope to see you September 12th. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so far we have close to 120 registered. I expect by the time we do this, we'll be in the 130 to 150 range. Um, we have several people that have requested tables that they can actually present information to people that are walking in around the room. And then, you know, we actually will have some programming going on that is going to be, you know, kind of icebreakers in, in networking um, fun, actually. So, uh, and, and as Dave said, cash bar, and then we'll be serving free hors d'oeuvres. Dave, anything else you want to add? No, that's all. Right, the event is at the Holiday Inn Rockside Road. Uh, we did it there because it's kind of like right in the middle of where we um, work. 
and it's easy to get to. It's right off of um, 480 and 271 and 71, 77. So it's, you know, it's all in that one area um, and uh, easy to get to. And they've got some really nice space there for us to do this. Um, so far, I don't see anything else. So if there is nothing else, I would say thank you all for being here. Dave, thanks. Great job, as always. Appreciate um, what you've done here tonight and uh, look forward to seeing you all uh, at the Holiday Inn Rockside Road uh, on the 12th. So when you go in and you register, yes, sir. one more question. Uh, one more question, Jonathan. Uh, networking wise, is there a standard for printed or digital business cards? So what do you recommend, Dave? Um, well, number one, I found that less and less people are using business cards. Number one, um, Bob, do you yes. want to weigh in? Oh, yeah. No, I, I do. I mean, I've been in, in, at events where, you know, people will use QR codes and you can copy those and, and save them onto your, onto your um, phone, which I think is really cool. Um, and, you know, I'm still a little bit old school. I always carry business cards with me. Um, I've been a salesperson my entire career. So um, while I am fairly technical, because that's mostly what I sold, I still, I still do that. Um, and, and so, you know, um, <laughs> it's, you know, it's, right now, I, I would say that, that, that people that are um, a little younger than us, a little hipper than we are, are all working with um, electronic cards. Um, they work well. When you get a business card, you either put them in a stack somewhere in your office, or you know, if you're really good old school technology, you'll actually scan those cards and put them into your, you know, into whatever system you use, uh, your CRM system to track people. But that is old school. Um, so you know, it's it's your call as to what you think you want to do, and I would just judge it by what everybody else in the room is doing. Make sense? Um, yeah, somebody, uh, Andrea and the people that she works with are all using digital business cards now. And, and yeah, and, and I go to events where I would say the majority of people do. Um, somebody wants to know what the hors d'oeuvres are. It's going to be hot and cold, pass arounds. Um, um, there's some vegetarian stuff. For those of you who are vegetarian, there will also be some, um, you know, um, non-vegetarian stuff. Not certain, you know, what else is, is out there, but, you know, there will be a good, um, no, uh, amount it'll fill you up mostly I would think um, so you know uh, let's see what else um, that's it there well, let me just let me just check out one other thing that I saw yeah so um, you know some people are already networking on this call Dave um, in the uh -huh. chat, which is great. That's well, great. Perfect. Yeah. So um, uh, looks like I still have two more messages. Thanks uh, for the season. Uh, any more table available chance? Um, not likely. I think we had 38 tables. They are all full. Um, that's, you know, space constraints within the ballroom that we're at in the Holiday Inn. Um, but you know, bring your cards or bring your um, QR codes or bring whatever digital other media you have. No reason why you couldn't pass around brochures as well if you've got them electronically or otherwise. Um, you know, this event is for you. Um, when you go online, um, this is really aimed at score um, men uh, mentees or clients. Um, you know, I would recommend if you don't have a score mentor in order to get into this, sign up and get one. Uh, you still have a few weeks before this thing actually happens. So I'd like to see you all here. Um, and I'd like to see you all have score mentors. Um, now that's all I have. Anything else? Let's see. I think there's another. Uh, somebody wants to know how to set up the table for the event. Um, the, the tables will be covered with tablecloths. If you have one that's got your logo on, which I typically bring with me, you can do that. Uh, if you've got brochures, if you've got material, if you've got samples, whatever it is that you have for your business, uh, bring those with you. If, you, if you've signed up and are um, um, going to have a table, uh, that would be 
uh, probably the best way to do that. All right, now I'm not seeing anything else. Okay, Dave, thanks again. Uh, thank right. you.